trip and we're going to ask what is your name and where are you from and what's been your favorite thing for both of you so far. <coughs> Jim Anderson, my wife Becky, we're from Newport, Washington. And I guess my favorite thing so far would be looking at some of the things that Joseph would have looked upon and, and Abraham as far as that goes. Pyramids and the Sphinx, because those are the kinds of things you see in National Geographic magazines all your life. But to actually be there and see it and experience it has been really special for me. a boat across the Nile River and we're gonna go get a camel ride to the monastery of St. Stephen over there and then after that we're gonna go to Elephantine Island and then we're going to go back to the ship and sail all afternoon. second day we've really seen things but so far the uh, tomb of Ramses and Queen Nefertari is amazing I'm, I'm right on the Nile there that's, that's the It's very clear, it's very black and white. Once Constantine is, um, becomes emperor and he embraces the Christian faith, and all of a sudden now Christianity becomes popular, um, that distinction is not so clear anymore. And because of the paganism that comes into the church and the, the adoption of idolatry, yet putting the names of saints to it and so forth, that there were some who reacted against that and wanted to remove themselves from, they felt, the more worldly church and so they came out into the desert in places like these in order to be able to find a way to connect with God in a more meaningful experience and that tradition of going to the desert really doesn't just start there but it really goes back all the way to the children of Israel throughout the Old Testament there's this um, there's this concept that if you want to hear God's voice that you go into the desert that's where the children of Israel heard God's voice very clearly in their sojourn. That's when people, like John the Baptist goes out in the desert, a chance to get away from the noise of society and to be able to, to hear the silence. Because often it is in the silence that God speaks to us. That you're so busy, 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 that you never really have time to stop and reflect about life uh, what's important, what's valuable, and where is God and what is God saying to me? <coughs> so these people who came here were looking for that. For us, this is a good place for us to stop for a few minutes and to listen to the silence. 
to be able just to hear the sound of the wind and to listen for the voice of God. So I'd like us to do what I did with my students uh, also when we were here just a few months ago. It's like to take about seven minutes, it's not a very long time. Seven minutes can seem like a long time in a society where we're just going non-stop, non-stop. Seven minutes for you to find a little secluded place, you know, 10 feet at least from the person beside you, and to just stop and to listen. It was a place where he used to stay and to close the door and he can stay here for days. going to be asking them what their name is and why they decide to come. I'm Dr. Carl Kosart and I am a professor of biblical studies at Walla Walla University and I'm here because I organized the tour and I'm glad to be here to be able to help people understand more about the ancient world and how it relates to the Bible. I'm Carol Kosart and I'm with him and I'm here because it's nice weather as opposed to summer when it was like 110 degrees. It's lovely. <laughs> that it, it is dating back to the Greek Roman period but also at the same time we have some other parts dating back to different eras for example about the inner part of the temple it will be dating back to the Greek period and the outer part especially this area the columns right and left it will be dating back to the Roman period there is a church inside the, the temple which is dating back to the time of Justinian and it said that it will be dating back uh, to, the, to the Coptic era.
outside it is going to be for God Horus where and it will be the same symbol or the same shape as God Horus the God of the sky which will be with the head of the falcon that the two gods they were standing on a higher pedestal or in a higher part here meaning that this one he was not equated with the other gods he not he is not yet a real god he considered to be still only as a pharaoh